one, this is a follow-up. We also, we have Melba Moore with us. And Ms. Moore is going to talk about, um, I guess her, her. Which, how would you describe it, Ms. Moore, your comeback show at, at 54? Because you've always been out there. Well, I don't like to say comeback because I'm in so many different uh, categories and uh, I'm always out there, And but I haven't been to 54 below in about five or six years, so. Okay, so that's what you have coming up in March, right? Yes, March 15th and 16th. Okay, so about for those people who maybe are in a cave who don't know anything or a younger generation, I know, I remember when I was uh, probably nine, 10 years old, my parents went to see a play. I, I lived in Washington, D.C., Pearly Victoria, and they came home. My mother came home talking about this Melba Moore, Melba Moore. And she said, you got to get out and hear more theater. And so she started dragging us out to the theater. And that's when I first heard about you. But you've been out there for a long time. I'm not in my head because Pearly, uh, well, our music, uh, it's, it's back on Broadway now. And it's called Pearly Victorious. But it's it's the play without the music. But oh. originally it was, it was written and um, performed and produced by Ossie Davis for himself because there were no black pieces. And uh, um, he he did it as a straight play starring his wonderful wife, uh, Miss Ruby D, on Broadway. And then later on, they wrote um, Pearly Victorious with music that um, starred myself and Cleavon Little and Sherman Hemsley. And then we did a, a video version with uh, Robert Guillaume and again, Sherman Hemsley and Linda Hopkins and a host of other incredible, wonderful, 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 wonderful people. I'm starting to start because I'm, I'm excited about it. Uh, but of course, that's, that's well, I'm trying to give you a little bit of my history. Yeah. Uh, so, But my first uh, occupation was as a public school music teacher in Newark, New Jersey. And my parents were entertainers. And I said, well, daddy and mother, you want us to have what you call real jobs. <laughs> not just be floating around here as entertainers because as entertainers and as black people, it's very inse insecure. And so we did that. And then my, my uh, stepfather st started to take me around to his agents and colleagues to try to get me into the industry. I met a lot of people, but one of the, the most important people and uh, first people I met was Valerie Simpson. Everybody know who she is? Oh yeah, Ashford and Simpson. Well, but also she wrote a lot of songs that Miss Chaka has written, like I'm Every Woman. I'm Every Woman, yeah. And a bunch of other things. Uh, she said she had written for Miss um, Diana Ross. You know, oh, for the she's Motown, she's Motown legend. Yes, for those who don't know who Miss Valerie Simpson is. So anyway, she was just starting in, into the industry um, as a songwriter. And I think we probably met, in, you, you have to, the kids have to look up the Brill Building. That was a meeting place for everybody and everything in the industry on Broadway. To go find an agent, to get your songs published, to get in the, whatever you wanted to do. On one of those floors, it was in the Brill Building. And so I was there trying to get into the industry. Um, I was in somebody's office and um, stand, sitting outside waiting for my meeting. And uh, Valerie was out there waiting for a meeting too. And so to make a long story, a little bit shorter, we exchanged numbers and she called me to get me into the industry, starting out in the industry as a backup singer for recording artists. So that's how I entered the industry. I, I got to skip to it. You know, you know, I've been out here a long time, so it's a long story. So I got to make it a little time. Take your time. <laughs> so to make it a little shorter, one of the recording sessions was for... Um, a, a keyboardist, a composer, and the music director for the Broadway musical Hair. His name was Galt McDermott. And he was doing all the music uh, from the, the show, uh, but but him as the, the keyboardist and the star of, of the album. And uh, he was he's being he was being assisted by uh Jim Rado and Jerry Ragney. Now they were the two stars of, of the show, the two male stars, but they also wrote the book. And they wrote a lot of the lyrics for, for the songs. So they were accompanying him. But my part of the story is they were hippies. <laughs> we were BAPS, Black American princess. I just came from teaching school. So, you know, I wasn't no hippie. All right. right. <laughs> anyway, we looked at them very strangely because one of my things, he didn't have no shoes on. That was uh, Jerry Ragney. And Jerry, was he had bright, bushy, curly, almost like an Afro hairdo. His, Stuck in a live plug. He looked like he looked like a hippie. Okay. <laughs> well, after we finished the the recording session, 
uh, Jerry Ragney asked me if I wanted to do hair. I had never been to a Broadway show. I had no inkling about what was theater or anything, just music, just total music. So I said, excuse me, I do not have a Bachelor of Arts degree in music to do nobody's hair. And so <laughs> I guess I had a sense of comedy even then. <laughs> yes. So he explained to me that he was talking about a Broadway show. <laughs> and he was saying to us, he loved the, the way that all of us sang, and they were looking for strong singers that were still casting for the show. So they invited all of us to come down and sing for the, the producer and, and the directors, and they promised that if the producer and directors accepted us into the show, they would find parts for us. Well, I was the only one from the recording session that said yes and went down. So that's how I got my first Broadway show. Wow. They, they invited me into the show, and then they found things for me to do. Man. But I'll skip to the end of that, too, because I stayed in the show for a year and a half. That's a very, very long time to stay in a Broadway show or any 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 theatrical production. But the point is, uh, by the time I was in it for a year, um, I auditioned for and got the female lead. But in doing so, I replaced Diane Keaton. Yep. She left the show. She wasn't a star yet, but she was going to become a star. But the thing is, I wound up being the first black actress to replace a white actress in a lead role on Broadway because hair broke all the rules. Hair, in the Broadway show Hair, this I know this sounds crazy to people who are living in this time, but as a school teacher, I could not wear my hair in an afro. I had to straighten it. Oh. It was, the, it was against their uh, um, what, clothing, what do you call it, their dress coat. Dress coat. I had to straighten my hair. So in, in uh, hair, I was free. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm trying to give you an idea of how innovative and open and honest they were. So uh, they they let me uh, replace a, a white girl. Now, what year was this again? This Late 60s, early 70s? 1969. Okay. Yep. So I made the front page of the entertainment section of the New York Times just because I replaced a white girl. Yeah. She wasn't in the store yet. <laughs> okay, yeah. So I'll skip to some other things. <clears throat> so while I'm still in the show, one of the black girls in the show says, Melba, you know, you you got in this show in a very unique way. You don't know how to audition, but you've been on Broadway for a year. You need to start going around and making the round. I said, well, I don't even know where to go. And I don't know nothing about theater. Anyway, she told me some places to go. And when she gave me some advice, for, for instance, like typecasting, she said, learn the script, not learn the script, but get the script. Uh, find out what it's about. And as much as you can, try to look like the part. She said that was called typecasting. So mm -hmm. you give the director who was auditioning you an idea if you're actually right for the part. Well, <clears throat> she told me where to go. And I, I went and auditioned for Pearly. And I got the part. But the part was a, of a Southern, uh, uneducated, orphan, illiterate domestic. The reason why I got that part is because, see, my mother was a professional singer. She was a single parent. She was gone all the time. So the, the uh, orphan, illiterate, traveling domestic is the lady that raised me. <laughs> wow. Wow. So I got a Tony Award because people thought I was acting. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a true story. Oh, my goodness. Can I back up a second? Because you said you did background. Who, who are some of the people that you sang background with? Oh, let me see. Ruth Franklin, Frank Sinatra. Um, I don't know if you know who Bobby Hebb is. Uh, um, oh, God. Who, who? Okay, but by the time I was doing wow. that, okay, so, yeah, so that was that, that, that was like 1969. So. Okay. Well, Valerie was always a gifted business person. And so she was at the top of her craft, even b beginning. And that so all of the big uh, recording artists, we sang back up on on the recordings. Wow! So if it was an Oz or anything back in that time, I'm right. probably in there somewhere. <laughs> I love it. Wow, Rita Franklin. I loved doing that. Wow. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I'm just gonna say though that that's I know. That's exciting. Yeah, a lot of people may they're living doing that and only that. Well, that's what I would have been doing for the rest of my life had I not gotten into the, the play. I love doing that. Wow. I would have been there doing that now. <laughs> so I've seen you on social media a lot lately. Saw you with In Vogue. Saw oh, you yeah. You didn't know what that was? 
But that was a Soul Train cruise. That's what I thought. It looked like you were on a ship. I was on the Soul Train cruise. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I was playing on the bill with Shirley Jones from Jones oh, Girls. Yep, yep, yep. We had a, a, a show that we were doing, and the, uh, and Vogue had a, a show that they were doing, of course. But they, you know, everybody did their shows at different times. And they have shows like going all day and half the night, so people can go see all the shows. Yeah, no, no, I, I was because I, I mean, I, I stay on social media. I'm like, man, she's over here, she's oh. over there. You, you everywhere. So well, that, I, let me give a shout out to my manager, my partner. You can't, don't tell nobody so they can steal him, all right? His name is Ron Richardson. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing his thing. He's doing his oh, thing. Yeah. And he's very, very social media savvy, so he helps me. He's, he, he keeps me out there. No, you're out there. I see you. And I'm like, wow, look at you with In Vogue. That's all right. I like that. And he's so, a good photographer, so everywhere I go, whatever I do, he can post it. Well, these days, you have to really kind of be your own media person as well, too, so. Yeah, I am know, you... You got the right team. You're, you're the smartest person because you know where all the smart people are. Right. That's the key. <laughs> you got them all around you. So so let's get to the 54 gig coming up. Uh, tell us about that. The uh, what, what do you got? That's going to be a little bit different than what I've been normally doing because all, all the the um, the things that I essentially do are, are my, my record hits and the new current recordings that I have. But this is strictly focused on theater and Broadway. The, the theater that I've done and some tributes to some other people. Like, for instance, did you know that Miss Lena Horne was a Broadway star? Now that I did not know. Yes, her, she did one play called Once on this Island, but her last play was her own uh, one woman show. Oh, uh, now I was aware of her own one woman show. Yes, I was aware of that. Well, we know her just as herself so much. We don't think yes. about her uh, theater or any particular thing, just Miss Lena. Right? Yes. Oh yeah, so this is a one woman show, right? Well, it's a it's a one woman play with music. Right. Yes. Okay. And it's 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 does it's not going to include any of my recording um, hits, only my theatrical hits. Got it. And so when we post this, we're going to post the schedule where people can go and how they can get tickets and the website so they can see you, and so maybe a whole new generation of people. Yes. We'll get to experience you. Now, I got to do I should say, not not Blacks in theater. It's a whole new renaissance right now. But oh, okay. <laughs> I got to tell you, um, I don't think I'm going to get in trouble for saying this, but there are a lot of people in your genre that are still out there. And sometimes I cringe. I'm like, Ugh, you still got it. You still uh, got it. Oh, well, you won't get in trouble with me. <laughs> you still and don't name no names so you can, you no, know. No, that's right. I'm just saying, you still got it. I mean, I see a lot. I'm on social media a lot. You you still you still got the pipes. Thank you. You still have the presence. And you look like you're in good shape in terms of, uh, you must do, a, do you exercise and fitness and all that stuff? The two things. Exercise. Exercisings and exorcisms. <laughs> oh, okay. Do you know what that is? No. You drive right. the bad spirits out. You let Jesus take over. Oh, okay. Because you froze on me for a second, so I didn't hear all of that. So you. Oh, froze. I said exercisings and exorcisms. Oh, 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 wow. Okay, I'll take the first one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, so, yes, uh, it's it's a very you. As far as I'm concerned, you have to treat yourself like you're an athlete. Yes, you got. It seems like you have the whole mindset of an athlete because that's that's you can't do what you do unless you're in shape. Right, and the vocal cords and the whole breathing mechanism they're muscles, so they need a certain nutrition, and then they need a, a certain exercising, or they. It's the, the, uh, the vibrato gets real thick and I mean slow. Wow. Um, you you lose your range because the the, uh, the muscles constrict. Okay. They get lower and deep like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh but it ain't funny, you know. No, no, that's your livelihood. That's your livelihood. 
So the name of the show is, uh, I have it, Melba Moore from Broadway with Love. Is that it? Yes. And I guess I'll just explain that it's Melba Moore from my Broadway with Love. I do a okay. couple of tributes, but there's essentially uh, um, pieces that I've done. Okay. I, I, I can just say some of them. Uh, I told you hair, pearly, um, Timbuktu starring opposite Miss Eartha Kitt, uh, and, and, uh, uh, and directed by and costumed by Jeffrey Holder. Ooh. I've done Chicago. I, I, I played the, the, the warden. I don't look like that, do I? No, no. Mama Morton, I have to make my low voice. <laughs> Give me some shoulder pain. <laughs> <laughs> nice dick. I don't know how they gave me that part, but I got it. Oh, my goodness. And real important for people to know about me, I hope, is Les Miserables. Hmm. Because it's about the French Revolution. It's not about Black people at all. Right. And second of all, it's really kind of semi-classical. And I can let people know that that's really my natural voice. All this other stuff I've learned how to do. I like to hoop and holler like everybody else, but I've had to learn how to do that. <laughs> you know, I can't remember if I asked you this the last time, but I'm going to ask you this. Influences. Because you oh. mentioned Eartha Kitt. You mentioned Lena oh. Horne. You mentioned... Are there any other influences that have really, really stuck with you? Miss Aretha Franklin. Okay. And do you get back to your your um Miss Maddie Taylor? Oh, my godmother, yeah. Well, uh, she was very close to Van McCoy. Van McCoy, yeah. They were like, I mean, brothers, brothers and sisters. Well, Van McCoy produced some of my first dance hits, like This Is It. Yep. And a lot of the dance music that I had on my first albums with uh is it with Columbia Records? I can't remember, remember which label. But the important thing about Van McCoy to me <laughs> <laughs> is once my business people got him for me, I reminded him that he wrote Lean On Me and that Mr. Ruth Franklin had recorded it. And I, ha I that's where I heard it. And yeah. I never let go of it. And I just always sang it and sang and sang and sang and sang until I developed my own rendition of it. And then when I met Van, I made Van do my arrangement of it with his instrumentation. So now that's become my signature piece, but influences, I'm I'm in love with, with Miss Aretha. It still breaks my heart that she had to pass away. Yeah. You know, Lean On Me, and you mentioned Van McCoy. How long did you hold that note? I'm holding it longer now. <laughs> really? <laughs> Well, well, on the record, you only have so much time, they get to cut it off, you know? Yeah. All right, for those... I don't sound like I'm bragging, but the, the point is, that wasn't there always. And the reason why it got to be there is because my voice was so small, I was, a, like I said, like a classical singer. I wanted to sing R&B and rock and roll and stuff, so I had to rough it up and get it strong, and I, I had to uh, swim. I didn't have to, but I wanted to. I liked to swim, so I sw swam, I took dance lessons, and I took aerobics, I took Pilates, I took everything. I really treated myself as an athlete until some of these other things came, and then I wasn't trying to hit a long note, but the stamina came there, and I was, took a big breath one time and hit a note, and belted it out, so my belting range started to expand, and it seemed like it kind of flew across the room, like it threw it. So it, it was a technique that I then learned. I was, oh, you hit it this way, and it kind of throws. And then I was listening to it, but it kept on going, so I kept on holding it. <laughs> I'll give our, I'll, I'll give our listeners. I'll say, look, boys and girls, here's your homework: download "Lean on Me" by Melba Moore and listen to those notes. Listen to that note and. Set your watch and see how long she held that note because it's long. I love it. People pay attention to the notes and I want them to, but I, I think, for, for instance, on Lean On Me, I was just so moved by Miss Rebitha because as a woman of God, she expressed herself in a certain way and she expressed things that were important to the spirit and to the whole being. And I was trying to say how important it is for someone to be there for some, someone else. And so these expressions of, that I'm hitting in these notes are saying that, so now it's that's my style. Yeah. You know, you're out here and you're still very relevant. Who are some of the young new artists that uh, capture your attention? Oh, God. Uh-oh. <laughs> no, we have so many. They are, I just watched the Grammys. Did you watch yep. the Grammys? I saw it. I saw the Grammys. Well, how about Fantasia dancing? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 
and singing at the time and doing Tina Turner. I mean, come on. Yeah. Oh, Tina yeah. Turner. Yep. That was a good rendition. That's, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I exercise and everything, but I got to kind of stand still because, you know, if you can dance, you can dance. But if you can't, you really can't. And in heels. Yeah. High heels. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yeah. you. She's an example. Of course, everybody loves Beyonce. You see what she does. Yep. But there are so many. We yes. have so, we're so and th those are young ladies. Just there's all kinds of instrumentalists, uh, um, male singers, groups. I, I'd say they stand on our shoulders. We must have did a good job because they are fabulous. We have so many. God, and all and different I'm, categories, and they're creating new categories. They are, and I'm just glad that they recognize folks like you. You know, and people who came before them. Um, they and, do. There's yeah. a new respect for that. And I think one of the persons helping to do that is D Nice. Oh, yes. He yeah. keeps us alive and keeps us relevant and keeps us as part. Okay, now I'm Auntie Melba, but I'm part of the family. You don't throw me away. Nope. But nope. I couldn't say that. It wouldn't matter if I said it. If I, I mean, if I said it alone. But right. the people who are out there that, that you listen to and pay attention to are being respectful of those things so that. I think we're, we're, we're growing in quality and integrity, not only as an um, entertainment and artistry, but as people. That is great. So your first show is, uh, I think here, March 15 and 16 is what I have. That's right. And we're going to have, uh, we're going to put the website up for this interview so people can get the tickets, get the interviews and get all the background story. We're going to hook you up up as always thank you yes any last thing you want to talk about or say before we close out um i love the way you do your interviews you you people <laughs> <laughs> you people <laughs> you journalists you're the ones that connect us to everybody so can i say a big big and you know i can remember when, when i first had a hit record back and you know like we were talking about in the 70s and then and everything People on radio did not talk. We didn't have journalists. We had yeah. Jet Magazine, Ebony Magazine. That was it. And that was it. Yeah, you're right. While well, we started to have some more. But now everybody has podcasts. We have a new name for it now. But we are journalists. You can have your own now because of the way the internet is. Yep. You, don't, you don't just have to wait for somebody to hire you. But we speak. We articulate. I mean, professionally. Of course, we always do <laughs> So, but I, I got to say thank you to the people that who really are in that genre. We don't get a chance to speak unless you all call us and ask us to say something. But you have to create that. You have to keep it. You have to go out and get the um, the interested personalities. You know, it's a business. So congratulations to an industry that really hasn't existed for us that long. And as African anything, not just African-Americans, that's true of many things. We're kind of a new Always new evolution. No, you're right. The internet is a great equalizer. And it's a pleasure for me to talk with someone like you who I grew up hearing, knowing. And like I said, my godmother worked with you. And um, it was just great. It's, it's just a great experience. And uh, you're royalty. I mean, whether you want to admit it or not, you oh, are I royalty. Accept it. I okay. didn't do it. Oh, I can accept it. <laughs> yes, yes. I can grow into it, you know what I'm saying? Yes. As you see here, a lot of people, I was talking to some people yesterday and told them I was going to be interviewing you. Somehow I talked about your star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And one woman said, what do you mean? She, didn't she already have a star? Can you talk about that? Because the person who is kind of connected to that has been in the news lately for a lot of other things. <laughs> and and then you, I know people watching, the, well, he didn't say nothing funny yet. What's she laughing at, right? <laughs> well, they will when I say, <laughs> when, when they hear the story about your star, Sponsor. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll let you tell the story, but congratulations on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Thank you so much. Well, I do have a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame as of about two months ago. And um, 
one of the things about the process, it's a quite in-depth and long process. And my partner and manager, Ron Richardson, I got to say shout outs and thank you to him because he found out what the process was over a period of two years. He went through the process and then he got up to the, the last point where you had to pay like $75,000 for it. And he said, you got to pay? <laughs> he said, yes, you got to pay. And so he started to go fund me. I think that's what it's called. Yep. We make, you raise money for whatever projects you want or, or whatever purposes you want. And um, we got a call from a wonderful person by the name of Cat Williams say, to say that uh, stop the, the fundraising. He would pay for the whole thing. And that's what happened. And my manager thought it was a joke. He was. He said, I know this is a joke. I know, you You know, Cat's uh, a wonderful comedian. So people think, you know, he was he, he was making jokes. He almost hung up on him because he thought he was joking. Because who, who would do something like that? But he said, no, I'm very serious. I respect Miss Moore. I think she should have it. And I, I want to to sponsor her. And that's what happened. Yes. Great for Cat Williams. He's in the news. So, but great for him for doing that. Well, he was in the news for, he, he doesn't do interviews because he's his own boss. He produces himself. He promotes himself. And he's become very, 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 very successful. And he's, you know, he, he don't owe nothing to nobody but God and him, himself. So uh, I think Shannon is the, the person. Shannon who, Sharp. Yeah, Shannon Sharp who was doing the interview with him. And out of the blue, he asked him, well, you know, do you have a relationship with Miss Moore? He said, a relationship? Nah. <laughs> That's my imitation of Cat Williams. Nah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so he said, well, how did it come about? And Cat told him that he heard about it and he respected me and thought that I should have it. And that he just did it. And so... One of the reasons why, of course, I became so important for the interview, he was talking about comedians. And he was kind of really shining a light on some of the things were, that were not so nice that he knew that they, they all did. Yep. And then my name came up in the middle of all, all of this. So they got millions and thousands and billions of hits. So, so did I. That's right. That's right. That's right. And the thing about that interview is, about the comedians, uh, I have yet to hear anybody really take any steps to say he's a liar, but we'll just move on. Ladies and that. gentlemen, Melba Moore from Broadway with Love, March 15th and March 16th. You can go to blackmenandamerica.com. She get more information. You will have information on this website and on all of our social media platforms. Thank you, Angelo Ellerby, for hooking me up. <laughs> Got to get that shout out. Ms. Moore, it's been a pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you so much. All right. Talk to you later. All righty. All right.